Hey Clashes, sneak peek number one for the second big update of 2024 in Clash of Clans and we have a lot of things to talk about. First off, we will get more ores in the game, we have new features for the clan chat, we have a rework of the clan perk, something a lot of people is look are looking for, and on top of that we have for example this new clan castle building level. This one is for town level 16 and you have not an increase in housing space or in the spell slots. No, instead you're having more siege machines inside your clan castle, to be more specific, two of them. And this makes sure that you can have a bigger variety in your attacks of siege machines to choose from. No, you cannot use two siege machines in the same attack. This would be kind of busted. Instead, you have now a lot of siege machines to pick from during your attacks to make sure that your attacks are as flexible as possible and you can always bring the perfect combination of siege machines which you can then choose from during the attack. But if you are free to play or a more casual player, don't worry, this is a really nice thing for you as well because this means you can bring maxed out siege machines on your own your clan castle from your clan mates and don't always have to max them out on your own. You can now rely on your clan to really make sure that you're bringing always max siege machines into the battle, which makes your life way easier. So you can tell already this new level is something for everyone. For obviously the people who really like to sweat out there and for the people who, well, like to play the game more casually. If you want to make sure that you have the progression as quickly as possible and buying any of the offers, like for example the gold pass in the shop, make sure to support your favorite content creator out there. And if you would like to support me, it is code ITSU. I really appreciate that, but let's move on with the next feature. I have already teasered this a little bit, but I think we should talk about it quite a bit, because the clan perks are getting a huge rework. To be more specific, we're talking about the donation. Yet, yes, that's right. A lot of you were asking for 10 troops, which you can donate. So you can donate all 50 troop capacity with like balloons, for example. But Supercell has pushed this to a whole new level. You can see the distribution between every single perk level, but you can see at the top already, if your clan is level 10, you can donate up to 50 troops. That's right. If your clanmate is asking for 50 goblins, for whatever reason, who knows? People like 50 goblins, right? You can donate that now all on your own. That is crazy. It's quite a nice change. On top of that, obviously, with the two new siege machines available now, which you can put into Clan Castle if you have that maxed out, well, you can donate them obviously now as well, both as the same player, which is a huge improvement for yourself. Another thing which is getting improved with new features is the clan chat. I mean, we know there's a lot of things still missing, but Super is keep adding new features. Now you can tag different groups of people and make sure that you're getting, well, a mention somewhere and a notification. So you can tag specifically other players in your clan, you can tag specifically kind of everyone, and you can specifically tag the leaders of your clan, which means this includes the leader role and the vice leader role as well to make sure that you can kind of contact and make aware of some problems maybe within the clan. Well, this is quite helpful to be, to say the least, right? But if someone in your clan is pushing this to another level and it's like taking non-stop and you want to turn off the notifications, don't worry. You can go into your more setting options and actually turn this off to make sure that if someone is trying to take advantage of this new feature and is in some way abusing it, you can make sure that it's not too annoying. But I think for every clan who is really uh, carefully and, well, making sure that they're taking advantage of this new feature and use it in a good way, I think this is a huge improvement. The next change is going to make this even better because there's now a feature where you can send a request into your clan who wants to join the next clan war. I think we all have been there, right? Like a clan member has forgotten to put themselves from a red to a green or a green to a red, so they're deciding kind of if they want to join the next clan war or if they don't. Well, there's now a new request option where you can ask for the next clan war if people want to join. You can even pin that message so everyone can always access it and this always is for the next clan war. So as soon as the next clan war is started, this one just disappears and you can start a new request for everyone to ask if they want to be in the next clan war or if they want to be left out, which is going to be a huge improvement for clan leaders organizing their clan wars. Another thing which is getting changed for clan wars is the loot in general for Channel 16s. Instead of having, as it was before, five star uh, starry ore which you gain for Channel 16, this is now getting pushed to a six starry ore. I know it's not the much, but hey, you take what you get, right? 
Another thing which is now getting enabled is 34 players versus 34 players or 45 players versus 45 players, which so far has been not possible. This has been now added to the game, which is quite nice. Another thing which has been improved, which is now then again for everyone, is the ores you gain if you lose or tie a clan war. If you lose so far, you have gained 43% of the max amount of ore you can claim during that clan war. This has been now pushed up to 50% instead. When a tie, this one has been pushed up from 50 to 57% of ores you can claim from the max rewards. On top of that, a combination of equipment and clan wars, equipments now finally count into the matchmaking of clan wars. I don't know why this has not been the case yet, but this has been now added to make sure that people who have maxed out their equipments are not getting ranked the same as someone who has maybe level 1 equipments, because equipments are a huge part of the game now. Another thing for the equipments now themselves is we have the first balance change to an equipment. And that's not the giant gauntlet of the Barbarian King, instead it's the haste vial of the Royal Champion. Because there was a bug in the game which made this equipment worse than it actually is. Which means when you use the active ability of this equipment, it actually dealt less damage. Which was a really weird bug and a downgrade of that equipment. But even with that bug, this equipment was still the strongest equipment for the Royal Champion. So Supercell had to fix the bug, which was a buff to the equipment, but then had to nerf it to make sure that it's overall in line and as strong as before. So overall it's kind of like a zero in the end. What has been nerfed though is the overall passive attack speed of this equipment. Which means overall it's kind of like zero. It was buffed because of the bug remove but it was nerfed after that to make sure that strength wise it's still the same and overall it's still the strongest equipment for the royal champion right now so nothing really changes when it comes down to priorities or something like that so that is really important to note as well another thing is now equipments are within the clan games added as task which means you can now get tasks where you have to attack with certain equipment to get some nice clan game rewards as well the builder base, which has been used so far a lot by players to actually complete quickly through the clan games. Well, clan games rewards from and points from those tasks of the builder base have been decreased. So that has now been lowered, so they're not as rewarding anymore. Another change for builder base is now finally you can choose a defensive layout, which has been not the case for a, long of, a lot of time. So far you could just spectate top players and get their, well, their actual bases which they're defending. This has not, been, uh, has not been changed. You have a show base and you have an actual defensive base, kind of like how Legend, for example, works in Home Village, which I'm not, I don't know why they haven't changed that in such a long time. Back to the Home Village. Here we have again an ore change which has been massive, okay? So there is the star bonus every single day, which is connected to loot, but as well to your ores you can claim every single day. But multipliers have not been affecting this. You can tell different leagues, and as high as you like, if you're getting higher in leagues, you get more of those ores, but those ores were not affected by, for example, multipliers with four, like star bonus events. This is now going to change. I have actually made a video where I'm showing you how to get into Legends with pretty much any town or level. And if one of those events is happening, you should get to fake Legends, how I like to call it. The video should be linked somewhere above me. Make, like, do it. Get there as quickly as possible if there is such an event happening. And the cool thing on top of that, it is as well synergizing with the star bonus you're getting, the multiplier, after you're upgrading a town hall level, which is a huge deal. So get to, to Legends if you are about to get to a new town level. Really important. Another thing now for the clan capital, which is going to change, I will just read it as well. And those two changes for the clan capital are actually the increase of the loot limit of each attack which you can gain in the trophy range of 5,333 all the way up to 6,100 trophies to make sure that it's well calculating correctly and another change is going to be that the scale of the defensive loot is now not connected to just the troops which are surviving but as well to the hit points which those surviving troops have so for example so far a troop which has one hit point survived and a troop which survived with full hit points were counted the same way and this is not the case anymore, which makes sense, right? But that has been the changes overall. Well, I hope you liked the first couple of balance changes for this uh, overall changes of the first sneak peek. And I hope I will see you guys back tomorrow for another video. Until then, we'll see you then and bye bye.